United Methodist Church. We call it the quintessential country church. Amen. And we are glad. Please come in. Please come in. Is everyone getting a worship bulletin as you come in? If you did not get one, we'll have someone to pass one to you. Everyone? There you go, Carol. It's important that you have a worship bulletin because you will find in it what we are calling a memory star. It's a star that looks a little bit like this, or some of them have different shapes, configurations, and they have a, a Christmas ornament hanger on them. What we're going to be doing with these is asking you, in the course of this worship service, to think about a prayer concern that you have, either for someone else or for yourself. And we'll invite you at the end of the worship service to hang the memory star on the Christmas tree as a way of offering up that prayer concern to God. And uh, this service is focused on inviting us to reflect on the challenges that we are facing. We are saying to one another when we greet, uh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, right? And we hope everyone will have a Merry Christmas, but we know that in this season of gladness, there is an awful lot of sadness. Some things have happened in our lives and in our world, in our communities, that are distressing for us. But what we want to say tonight, what we want to celebrate, is that God is big enough to take the pain that we offer Him. God is big enough to handle the hurts, and God can transform those hurts into hallelujahs. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Now... So you know about the memory star, and uh, let me say also that we are we don't have a formal offering in the worship service tonight. And I know some of you are saying, this is a church and you don't have an offering, what's wrong with you people? But we want to focus on expressing the challenges that we're facing, expressing our prayer concerns and inviting God to respond. But we know that some of you... Uh, don't feel right when you come to church unless you make a, a gift uh, for the support of the, of the ministry of the church. So if you want to make a gift, you can place it on the altar at the end of the worship service and someone from our finance department will collect those and see that they go to the right place. But that's just up to you. If you uh, feel the need to make a gift, then that's the way to do it. Now, we have some guests here tonight, and in this holiday season, I want us to welcome guests and introduce people who we have brought with us. Let me begin by saying my daughter is here, Marion, uh, who's a school teacher in Fort Worth, and I'm glad that she's here. This is her first time in the chapel. Marion, wave your hand. So we can Musician. 
He's going to be playing Amazing Grace for us tonight. And my friend Wayne plays guitar, and he plays Amazing Grace. But up until now, he has resisted my offers to come and play in church. So, Joel, you'll, you'll be showing him how to do it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> he will learn that you'll be his example. Praise be to God. All right, so we have welcomed one another. Let me give a few more directions for the worship service. The, we have some leaders who will be reading various parts of this worship service, but there are also parts for the congregation. Those parts that are marked all, that means all of us here in the sanctuary will be invited to join in reading those parts. Uh, there will be various people who will invite you to say, okay, all of us, let's join together and let's read those parts. You see your worship bulletin, those parts that are marked off? Are we on board together? Yes. All right, very good. And we also have the worship service projected onto the screen, so you'll be able to see it there as well. All right. Are we ready to begin? Oh, let me introduce our uh, pianist. Uh, this is Pat Hollingsworth, who is playing for us this evening. And if you notice, at various parts of the worship service, we sing one or more verses of various hymns. Verses 1 and 4 of Old Little Town of Bethlehem will be singing one verse at a time of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And we'll be singing all the verses of uh, um, Away in a Manger and a couple of verses of Silent Night. Now, when we sing Silent Night, before we do it, you'll be handed uh, a, a candle. And you'll uh, be lighting the candle of the person next to you. And we'll sing Silent Night with a lighted candle in our hand. All right? So... Uh, we don't want any fires or any <laughs> wax drift anywhere. And let me give you a little tip about how to handle lighting a candle. When you are lighting someone's candle, do not turn your lighted candle on its side. Don't make it horizontal because it will drip wax and that's hot stuff. Let the person who has the candle being lit turn their candle to the side and you with the lighted candle keep it upright. Okay? That way I stay out of trouble with the trustees. <laughs> if we drip wax on the floor, they'll make me clean it up, all right? We don't want that. All right. Are we ready to begin? I'll begin with the leader's part uh, in uh, the call to worship, and then the people have a response as well. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by God. And without God, nothing came to be. What came to be through God was life. And this life was the light <coughs> of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Please turn now in your hymn book to number 230, Old Little Town of Bethlehem. Why are you so far from helping me, 
so far from the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, by day, but you do not answer, and by night I find no rest. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. It was you who brought me from the womb. You who kept me safe on my mother's breast. Since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. God does not despise the affliction of the afflicted. God does not hide from me. When I cry to God, God hears me. Thanks be to God. Second reading, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou knowest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Jacob, if you would get the lights for me, please. Welcome to a blue Christmas. Somewhere, someone is whistling joy to the world. Somewhere, someone is humming, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Somewhere, people are shopping for last minute gifts while getting caught up in the giddiness and the hustle and the bustle. But tonight, we gather on one of the longest nights of the year to sing quieter tunes and sit in stillness. Tonight, as ancient people have done for millennia, we gather as the darkness threatens to overtake the light, and we wonder, will darkness overshadow everything, or will light come to renew us and cheer us? We don't wonder, as the ancients did, when the sun will die and fail to return. But we do, like them, gather in the darkness of this long night to name our own darkness and fear and grief and to see the beauty of the light. Maybe your loved one has died. Maybe your family is just a dysfunctional mess. Maybe home for you is far away and you're stuck here. Maybe you will get blue at Christmas time or your struggle with depression might be magnified. For some of you, growing up, your mother or father made a beautiful thing out of Christmas. Plates of candies and cookies covered the entire dining room table. Candlelight filled the house as you welcomed family and friends on Christmas Eve to visit and share a glass of something good, knobbed or not. But then you might have seen something else in your mother or father or your other relatives. A deep river of winter tears. A sadness at this time of year. A blue feeling that came over her or him at Christmas. They could never quite put it into words. It was part sentimental, part grieving for family and friends who had died, part longing for days when life wasn't so hard, part a sense that the beauty and the gift of this life is just fleeting. And even as we enjoy it, we feel it slip, slip, slipping away. And perhaps you might have inherited this joyful melancholy from your parents. Because few Christmases go by that you don't shed some tears for all those reasons and more. It's hard to feel such depth and weight 
and sadness and blues in this time of the year when the expectations are so high and the demand for joyfulness is so great. But we are here tonight because the only road through that darkness into the light, the only way to go over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house, or wherever you want to be at Christmas, is through the honesty of tears and grief and the whole complex of feelings we feel because we are alive and we have depth and we need to winter as much as we need to summer. And we know that honesty about these feelings and this truth and not a mask of smiles and a facade of cheer is the only way to true, deep, profound joy. Well, dear friends, we have the gift and authority of Scripture on our side tonight. The good news of God comes to those in the darkness, to those who are clinging to just a thread of hope, to those who have nearly given up, to those who know the tears of these things. Listen to Isaiah's profound words of good news. Now those people live in darkness, but they will see a great light. They live in a place that is very dark, but a light will shine on them. And who does Jesus reach out to with his most treasured words when he says, Come to me, all that are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He is speaking to those burdens in life that are heavy, and those who bear a hard yoke and absolutely need relief. And in John's Gospel, when it sums up the good news of Christ, it cannot do so without mentioning the darkness again. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. It is clear throughout Scripture that because God is compassion, God's mercy is offered abundantly to those in darkness, those in grief, those in poverty, those in sickness, and those in hopelessness. And the secret that I want to share with you tonight, dear friends, the secret that I can't share with just anyone on Christmas Eve is this. For those whose Christmas is blue, for those who can't hold back the winter tears, for those who know darkness and grief and pain, they know the depth of the good news of God in a way that, that those who only sing fa la 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 cannot know. Tenny Chapel, you people here tonight, this dark night, this is when God's light shines the brightest because we come together in honesty about life's struggle and still we see the light shine. This is the entire reason that Christmas was placed on December 25th anyway. It was time to coincide with the solstice celebrations when the darkness was at its apex and the light was most needed and shone most beautifully. And this light, we say with humble trust and quiet joy, this light is Christ, God's own self and body in human life, so that human life could be lifted up to the divine life. Friends, I'd like you to contemplate this preview of Christmas good news. The mystery of the good news is the depth and the length and the breadth of God's mercy and compassion for humanity and creation. This mystery is summed up in the idea of incarnation, enfleshment, or embodiment. It says that divine love and mercy will not remain distant concepts for us to debate their meaning and ponder their existence. No, instead, God enacts divine love and mercy in both human, flesh, and blood living. 
Jesus is the guarantor and gift of this embodiment. Our lives are the experience of it by the Spirit's power. Here on this, the longest night, incarnation is God moving into our tears and our laughter, our joy and our sorrow, our fear and our courage, our life and our death. Because only in the cold, odd mixture of these things of light and darkness do we come to see the true meaning of our lives and the infinite greatness of God's love and mercy. So I want you to know, Jenny Chapel, it's okay to be blue when everyone else is green and red. It's okay to be sad in the midst of excessive merriment. But also, it's okay to be joyful, even when we grieve or just plain feel sad. It's okay to let yourself celebrate in hard times. It's okay to share moments of laughter, even when we know illness and grief and even death. Because Christ is with us in all of it as God's own compassion. This gathering and all gatherings of people in the church is wrapped and swaddled in the great news of God in Christ incarnate. It is a mixture of tears of joy, tears of sorrow, tears of laughter, tears of regret, tears of grief, and tears, yes, tears of new birth. But when we gather together in such infinite love and mercy, which is always a beautiful mystery beyond our comprehension, all we have to offer God anyway is all these blessed tears. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 <coughs> I would like to now um, introduce to you Joel Sanye, who's going to play some special Christmas music for us. He is a Grammy-winning artist, and he's going to be performing on his Cajun button accordion. <laughs> Jane, if you'll turn the lights up, he will appreciate it. <laughs>
Let me just, before we begin lighting the candles, let me just tell you a little story. And this will help you celebrate how God is in the blessing business. Joel was explaining to me that he grew up as a sharecropper. Since he grew up, growing up, he didn't know what a dollar was. You, everything was, I guess, on, on credit. You got credit for doing work. And um, when he said he didn't know what a dollar was, I thought about something I had done recently. I went to uh, a function on my telephone called iTunes, and I downloaded the song he just played, and I think I, I paid about a dollar for it. 